Robin Olds had a life that always revolved around aircraft and the Air Force. As a young man, he attended West Point. He then became a fighter pilot and went over to Europe, initially flying P-38s and then later P-51s. And amazingly, at age 22, he took command of a fighter squadron, which is un unthinkable now. He's credited with 12 victories during the war, along with several aircraft destroyed on the ground. So even at a young age, Robin Old showed great promise. After the war ended, probably a, a high point of his career before he went to Southeast Asia was he was a member of a P-80 demonstration team. Now he was itching to get back into the fight. So during the Korean War, he did everything he could to try and get to the battlefield. He wasn't able to do so. So when so the Southeast Asia War occurred in the 1960s, he made absolutely sure that he got back into the fight. It's during the Southeast Asia War that Robin Olds goes from being an effective and notable leader to an Air Force legend. In 1966, he took command of the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing at Ubon, and due to his leadership, the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing became the top MiG-killing unit in the Air Force during the Southeast Asia War. He had the backing of his men, they loved him, and he led from the front. He didn't stay back at base. He was always at the front of the formation, always leading, putting himself in danger, and leading the fight. Robin Olds was tremendously effective, and a good example of that effectiveness was Operation Bolo. Robin Olds, along with Captain John Stone, the tactics officer for the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing, came up with this brilliant, brilliant plan. They came up with a plan that would fool the North Vietnamese into engaging our fighter forces. And this was basically the setup. On the 2nd of January, 1967, F-4s from the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing entered North Vietnam from the west on the same route as F-105s. Also coming in from the east were F-4s from the 366 Tactical Fighter Wing to trap them. And the North Vietnamese completely took the bait. They came in with their MiG-21 force, and in 12 minutes, seven MiG-21s were shot down. Now, seven might not seem like a lot, except that was half the fighter force, half the MiG-21 force of the North Vietnamese Air Force. And then a similar trap sprung a couple days later, shot down two more MiG-21s. So after that, the North Vietnamese, for a period of time, kept their MiG-21s out of the battle. It was absolutely brilliant. Robin Olds, by his example, has really cemented his place in the history of the Air Force as one of its truly great and courageous combat leaders. And if I had to describe Robin Olds in two words, it would very simply be courage and charisma. And I really want to, you know, do the big final. Uh, my name is Christina Olds, and I am Robin Olds' eldest daughter. I'm here to visit the uh, QF4 that's named after my dad and has been flying around painted as SCAT 27 for the last many years. That's his ring. Well, I saw it fly for the first time in 2007 at Nellis for the 60th anniversary of the Air Force, which they dedicated to my dad. So it was very emotional. He had just passed away five months before. I've seen it fly several times in air shows, and it's always a thrill, um, especially when it's up with a Mustang which was my dad's favorite and the F4 together. And it's, it's, really, it's really emotional. I'm glad that his name is being carried into the sky still in, in this capacity. Rather than sitting in the boneyard, I think he would rather have these great old warrior planes be flying and be serving the way they are. I think he'd be fascinated by it. He would probably be up, have been up in one or three over the last few years to experience it. Um, and he would, I think he would understand the mission, the purpose that, that it would be serving. Yeah, there'd be a little bit of sadness, but, um, you know, it's better than sitting in the boneyard or being dismantled and torn apart for parts. I think he'd be happy about that. My dad and I were, were great buddies, and so I followed him around like a puppy as a child and through my teens and in my 20s, and then we became best friends of sorts. and. Um, so I was able to travel with him to many speeches and air shows in, during his retirement years and really got to see how revered he is by pilots around the world. 
and it gave me a real taste of, of what he was all about and what his mission was and what his personality was in the Air Force. And he was a great dad, just an amazing dad. Uh, great fun all the time. Um, really, really great to follow around. I always felt safe with him. I have a, as much as a daughter could have a sense of why his men loved to follow him and said they would follow him into hell and back. I felt the same way as his child. He sincerely connected with people as he connected with me as, as his child and with his friends. And what he would do when he got to his new assignments, he would stalk through the whole base and introduce himself to everyone in the hospital, in the BX, in the barber shop. He would take a six pack of beer out in the flight line at three in the morning and talk to the kids who were working on the aircraft and say, learn about their families, you know, learn their kids' names, where are you guys from? And then he'd get into, what do you need? What's going on? What's going wrong? And so he did that on a really personal level. And so that meant he engaged the, the NCOs, he engaged the pilots, he let everyone know he cared. The thing is, it was sincere. It wasn't at all put on. That's how he was as a person. And I think that's what makes a great leader, is that personal connection. And I think that's why his leadership is so, is almost known more today than his abilities as a fighter pilot. There are a lot of great fighter pilots, a lot of very skilled pilots, but his leadership was an innate thing with him. I think the greatest accomplishment is how he's inspiring pilots today. That, to me, is the single greatest thing. I visited Kunsan in uh, Korea last year, and his eighth wing moved from Ubon in Thailand in the late 70s up to Kunsan. And he, he named the eighth wing the Wolf Pack right before Bolo, his big operation in Vietnam. And to this day, it's the Wolf Pack, and it's all about Robin, and it's all about the Wolf Pack. And you could see this, there's this visceral kind of thing you feel when you're there that his spirit is so alive. And the, the Wolf Pack emblem and the WP and the tails of all the aircraft, everything on base is named Wolf Pack Lodge, Wolf Pack Wheels, Wolf Pack this, that. And you can feel the sense of pride, the sense of purpose, focused mission that those, those guys all have. I, what I'm doing now, and when I wrote Fighter Pilot, the book, really is for the sake of all the active duty fighter pilots around the world because I want them to have that sort of infusion of spirit that keeps them going and lets them know they're doing a great job. And my dad is, he's flying on their wing. Every single one of them, he's there.